Video games often hold happy memories for us all. Like when I double perfected you in Street Fighter on your birthday. No, that, that was a bad memory. Not for me! Unfortunately, there are some things about games we would rather forget. Like the fact that so many of them, at some point, will force you to play a button sequence memorization minigame. We can't forget them though, because our memories are now so good from playing exactly these minigames that we can never forget anything. Here then are the memory games that we wish we could just delete from our brains. But we're minor spoilers for the following. There are things that you expect a wolf to do. Hunt smaller mammals, look great on a t-shirt, be literally everyone's spirit animal of choice. What? I'm just saying. Statistically, some of you are crayfish. But one thing you don't expect a wolf to be able to do is instantaneously memorise complex sequences of dots, which is a shame because that's precisely what's required of mythical wolf Amaterasu, and by extension you, the player controlling her, in Okami. At least it is whenever you meet a so-called blockhead. <laughs> These seemingly impassable demons take the form of an imposing wall that cannot be demolished. That is, until you headbutt them hard, then smack these chatty chunks of masonry right in the briefly highlighted weak spots in the correct order. <laughs> To be fair, head butted to death by wolf does sound like a warrior's death to me. With a blockhead destroyed, you're free to enjoy the rest of Akami without having your powers of memory stretched like saltwater taffy, but only until you meet another one. And guess what? These recall wrenching memory mini games get harder and harder each time, all the way up to Blockhead Grande, which unbelievably asks you to instantly memorize the order and position of eight weak spots. Or, or, hear me out, no. This memory sequence is so infamously difficult that the Okami Wiki recommends trying to mark out the positions as they appear on your TV screen using dry erase marker, which incidentally we do not recommend. Other strategies to beat this ludicrous challenge include filming the sequence on a phone or marking the dots on paper as they appear. Yep, yep, okay, yep, all right, okay, I think I got it. Uh, was this it? Did I get it? What's the worst thing that could happen in a city named after a raccoon? A little trash panda going through your bins adorably. <laughs> ah! Ah! Brain monster with teeth! That's that question answered. Crikey. Well, with those things hanging around, security must be high on the priority list. So, scattered around the raccoon city police station are portable safes, containing important upgrades and equipment. A sensible security feature, you might think. And you'd be very wrong, as it turns out the way to unlock these babies is through an annoying guessing memory game. When you press a button, a corresponding light appears at the top, and it's your job to remember which button corresponds to which light. Press the eight buttons in the sequential order of the lights at the top, and hey presto, you're in! But should you make a mistake, you have to restart the sequence, remembering all the buttons you've already pushed. Sounds fun. But that still sounds kinda secure, you may still mistakenly muse, but the fact that you seemingly have an infinite amount of guesses kinda means that anyone can eventually crack it as long as they have enough time. However, let me ask you this. If you had the choice between being stuck on yet another pattern memory game or resigning yourself to the T-Virus, what kind of zombie horror would you hope to turn into? Slog through it and your meagre reward is the contents of the safe and a smug little chip tune and light show which really doesn't feel in keeping with the terrifying world of a zombie outbreak. I guess it's a nice way to brighten your mood in the dark and scary police station, just as long as none of the zombies hear it. There are 
loads of things to remember in the Harry Potter series, like all the different characters, the different Hogwarts houses, the different spells, and all the new lore that they keep putting up on Pottermore. Poop themselves and make it vanish. However, in the Lego Harry Potter series, whilst characters could remember a variety of spells, there was one set of bookshelves that stumped all but one magic user. The only way to open the doors of the top section would be to play a little visual memory game. Simple enough, you'd think, but apparently not, as the only character who was smart enough to do this puzzle was Hermione. Huh? I mean, are Harry and Ron really too dumb to remember a sequence of just four images? I mean, well, maybe Ron, but Harry? Well, to be fair to Harry, not Ron, he can do one, not even Voldemort or his minions could master this simple puzzle, meaning that lots of people could have been saved by simply hiding in one of these cupboards. However, we shouldn't mock the Dark Lord, not only because he's a terrifying snake-faced man who never wears shoes, but because Hermione can only complete the puzzles because she's a massive cheater with a massive book to help her. But frankly, it's good that she has it, because these little bookshelves are bloody everywhere, forcing you to stop, watch the sequence, copy the sequence, and then hope that whatever falls out is going to be useful. You stop to do this so many times that by the end of the games, the shapes are almost burned into your retinas. At least one of the shapes is a magic pointy hat, so when you look at people, you can line it up with their heads and pretend you're at Hogwarts. As close as I'm gonna get. Where was my letter to Hogwarts? Let me in! I'll even be in Hufflepuff! In all the scenarios in which we'd least like to be subjected to a surprise memory exam, by a disembodied clown face is, yeah, it's top of that list. Well then more fool us for playing epic Super NES game Chrono Trigger, because that's exactly what happens. For complicated plot reasons involving time travel, it becomes important for your hero to obtain a perfect replica of protagonist Chrono. And where to find such an object? Why, at the carnival, of course. Nornstein Beckler's Tent of Horrors. Well, this isn't going to be good. And it isn't! Beckler's situation invites many questions. Questions like, who invited a laughing clown face to this carnival? Why does it refer to a mostly empty tent as a lab? Why does this Nornstein Beckler, who you've never met, have a working replica of your body trapped in a cage? <laughs> and most importantly, when can we leave? Not yet is the answer, because before he gives you the replica, Beckler wants you to win a memory game against your clone, matching its movements to either raise your left or right arm, to laugh, or to look horrified, which we didn't need prompting to do, frankly. Not only is this challenge really freaky, it's bloody hard too, as the pace increases dramatically the longer the competition goes on, and it costs 40 hard-won fair tokens to play. You'll have to endure it though, because beating this minigame and getting the clone doll is crucial to the plot. Until then, it lives in your bedroom, able to be transformed into a variety of poses, but only one that accurately reflects what you've just been through. Yeah, that about sums it up. Pokemon would be great teachers. I mean, it's right there in the theme tune. You teach me and I'll teach you do it. Pokemon. Oh, we did it. But the message of that iconic theme song is willfully subverted in Pokemon Stadium for the N64, which, while primarily about watching Pokemon knock seven bells out of each other to further your trainer career, also includes a series of bizarre mini games, including running Rattata on a treadmill, helping Lickitung gobble down sushi in an unhygienic, if adorable, race to eat as much as possible. And yes, a school run by Clefairies. In 
this fiendish memory test, an in-charge Clefairy, sporting trendy retro specs, has you and three other students memorise a sequence of increasingly complex directions, and then enter them from memory using the controller. This is in order to teach... dancing, I guess? But then what are the desks for? Clefairy, this is a conceptual nightmare. Maybe it's just to teach obedience, since every time a pupil makes a mistake, an ominous yellow cross appears above that Clefairy's head. And then, when the dance is done, well, this happens. Yikes! Guess Madame Clefairy's Memory Academy has a relaxed attitude to corporal punishment? Then again, maybe it just prepares them for the brutal and violent life all Pokémon eventually lead. Valuable lessons, Clefairy! What if that was a Scizor coming at you? With a squeaky mallet. There are three things that my mother always taught me. Be helpful, be kind, and don't walk into the mouth of a giant turtle. But I eschewed that last piece of advice in Banjo-Kazooie's Bubble Goop Swamp and was promptly punished with a memory game. See, mother knows best. Inside, you stumble across a bunch of what must be tortoises as they have feet instead of flippers, which opens up a whole load of questions on top of why are the insides of this turtle covered in stone and moss? But the conductor has no answers, just a big ego. Oh yeah? Well, I've never heard of you. Probably because you spent years performing inside a giant turtle. Tiptop's pieces, which you have to copy by bashing the members of the choir, are pretty simple, but are made much harder by the fact that the camera angle showing each sequence never matches up to the camera angle you play from. Should you get confused by this, or the two shades of purple and the two shades of blue, and end up making a mistake, you'll take a hit, and have to sheepishly return to Tip Top for another look at the order. Yeah, alright, don't rub it in. You live inside a turtle. Neither of us is living our best life. But when you finally get all three right, Tip Top justly rewards you with a puzzle piece, and the great relief that you'll never have to do that again. Right, now where's the way out? Oh god, I hope I don't have to use the emergency exit. The rock-eating Goron tribe in the Legend of Zelda series love to dance, and dance well. Well, they love to dance, at least. OK, the Gorons might not have moves to set the disco tech alight, but for these rotund rock eaters it's more important to move with rhythm, as anyone who's suffered through the infamously tough and non-optional memory game in Zelda Oracle of Ages will attest. To get to a new area, Link must acquire a symbol of brotherhood to prove himself an honorary Goron, and the only way to show he's worthy is by memorising the graceful Goron's dance moves. Luckily, there are only two moves at Link's disposal, assigned to the Game Boy's two buttons. These are moving his body in a random way, and then striking an obnoxious pose. Which, to be fair, is also my dancing technique. But that's not all. Dazzling these fussy Gorons means not only memorising the order of sounds that emanate from your Game Boy's tinny, tiny speakers, but also hitting the rhythm precisely as they do, or else expect to get yelled at by the suddenly not-so-graceful Goron, like he's that angry drum teacher from Whiplash. I'm not rushing, I'm dragging! The game cartridge out of my Game Boy because it's going to a charity shop. So, those are some of the memory games that we wish we could forget, but they improved our memories too much and now they're just stuck there forever and they're really annoying and, oh, just, oh, can you remember any like that that you just didn't enjoy but they're just there forever? Pop those down in the comments below. But now, I have a fun memory game for you, okay? I'm going to name some things on screen and then you should click them 
in that order. First up, video from us about sports that you wish you could watch in real life from video games. Then, from outside Xbox, it's uh, levels that nearly ruined games. Um, and then there's a little, little thumbs up button down there that you should like. Uh, uh, click on that. And then uh, the bell um, and the subscribe orb as a bonus. Thanks for watching. Bye.